What's up everyone and welcome back. Nathan Larson here with another video for you home studio musicians, producers, artists, and songwriters. And in this video, we're talking about why Logic Pro is frankly better than GarageBand. So I've seen a lot of videos talking about GarageBand versus Logic and um, unfortunately a lot of them don't actually get at some of the bigger things that I look at and that I see are some of the really big differences between Logic and GarageBand. And I wanna talk specifically about that. I wanna talk specifically about the things that you cannot do in GarageBand that you can do in Logic that make a really big difference. Now, some of you are probably going to be thinking that some of these are nuanced, not all of them, but many of them are nuanced. Might not seem like a big deal, but when you add all this together, Logic is so much more powerful than GarageBand. So the first thing I wanna say is that the last two days, I've been spending a little bit of time each day producing a track in GarageBand. We're gonna take a look at just kind of an example of where I'm at so far with it. I'm gonna be using it to show you some things I'm talking about, some things that I'm noticing that are very irritating, having been producing in Logic for probably the last nine to 10 years. So without any further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so I do have a project open here in GarageBand, and then over here I have a project open, and this is in Logic. Um, so the one that's all colorful, this is Logic. The one that is pretty much all just green and blue, this is GarageBand. So again, what I wanted to focus on with this whole video is talk about the things that you cannot do in GarageBand that you can do in Logic and show you what some of these things are. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that you can only use the pointer tool and the pencil tool in GarageBand, whereas in Logic you have access to a whole plethora of other tools. Now, why is this a big deal? So let's go ahead and just show you an example. If I'm in here, I can click on audio, right? I can move it, I can do all sorts of stuff. This is, again, GarageBand. Now, if I hit the command key, it will change my cursor to a pencil, so I can actually create MIDI uh, regions. So I can start plugging in MIDI notes. Um, if I were to open up that, uh, here so I could start adding MIDI by doing that. Other than that, there, there are no other tools that you have access to apart from the pencil and the cursor tool. Let's switch over to Logic now. In Logic, you'll notice right here where my cursor is, you've got these three options here. And the way that I did that is by going in and enabling advanced editing in my preferences. So you go to advanced, advanced editing, and you're gonna be able to see all of these different tools. So if I click on this drop down window here, there are three tools that I can pick from on the top, and then I can drop down and pick which tool I want to set. So I've got my first one as a pointer tool, but you have all of these other tools here. The main ones that we're gonna talk about are the scissor tool, the fade tool, the automation curve, and the marquee tool. And now over here, I have the second tool, I have that set as scissors, and this other tool here, I have that set as a fade tool. Now what happens, I'm just gonna show you the two options here. Right away, I've got my pencil or not my pencil, sorry, the cursor. Now if I hit the command key, notice that that just turned that into the scissors. So I can actually start cutting up audio here. Let me zoom in. I can start cutting. This is audio. I can do the same thing with MIDI regions. This is MIDI region. I can just go ahead and cut that and delete it. And then with the, with the uh, uh, fade tool, that's to add fades on regions to avoid any popping or clicking. Or you can see here, I have this reversed vocal, and that is a fade right there. This is what that sounds like. It's right here. So that fades in. Okay, so that's the first thing is you do not have access to any of these tools in GarageBand. This really becomes a very big problem when it comes to editing. Um, the automation curve tool is super helpful for getting really detailed on your automation. With like volume, you can use this for um, EQ automation, all sorts of really cool things that you just simply cannot do in GarageBand. So let's switch back over to GarageBand. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is with the cutting and splicing, you cannot edit audio regions in the same way, which is kind of like the old school way, but still the way to edit audio. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's go to one of these guitar parts. Let me just show you what this sounds like first. So it's kind of got a, like a little bit of an anthem pop rock vibe going. So this guitar part here, let's just like, let's open this up. Now, 
if I wanted to edit this and like get this synced up and locked into the pocket, I've already done um, flex, flex time, so you can enable that here. And you can go in and you can edit the timing here with flex. However, flex is only good for some things. What you cannot do is you cannot go in with the scissor tool and zoom in here. And I'm like so tempted to do it. I'm trying to hit the command key because I want to open up the scissors. You can't like start cutting in here and like moving things. I guess you could use command T, which will cut, create a cut mark right there. But there's no ability to add crossfades. Um, so there's no chance that you can actually edit your rhythm with an audio track, which is really problematic. Whereas if I look here in Logic, let's just um, let's just go into here. I'm just going to duplicate this and just pop this over. Let's open this up. So I've got this open here, and uh, I've got my scissor tool and my pointer tool. So I can actually go in here and start cutting. So like, let's say that I want to make this really sit in the pocket. Like this part right here looks like it's a little early, so I can cut right there, move it there, swing that out, create a crossfade. So that's basically the basics of editing audio. I'm not actually gonna do that um, because I actually edited this to the primary vocal, which um, he was kind of not sitting on it exactly on time. So being able to edit audio regions is one of the things that you can do in Logic that you cannot do in GarageBand that I think is really important because if you wanna have tracks that are really locking in, having the ability to, aud to edit the audio is super important. I'm just, just gonna say that using flex time does not work all of the time. Um, it can be really problematic and finicky. The other thing that you cannot do in GarageBand that you can do in Logic is actually look at your, basically your mixing console. So in GarageBand, if you're trying to mix, all you can see is just your faders here on the side vertically. And if you wanna look at your plugins, you have to actually open up the smart control here and the plugins are often tucked away. You can look at them all in here. You cannot see the whole mixing window with all of the plugins laid out in a way that makes a lot of sense. So in Logic, we can go up here and boom, you can see everything that we've got going on here. And you can see all your plugins. These are all of our tracks. The other thing is that it actually gives you metering. So like, let's just go ahead and listen to a little bit here. Okay, so this lead vocal here is at negative 7.4 dB. If I am using GarageBand, there's no way for me to know what my decibel level is as it's coming out. Um, the other thing you cannot do is you cannot copy over plugins or plugin information to a different track. So like earlier, I was working on this part right here where I have all these claps. Here, listen. Okay, so I did these claps. And I added plugins to clap one, right? So I've got this compressor, EQ, and a reverb. And uh, then I was like, I just want to copy all of those down to clap two, three, and four. And I couldn't. So I literally had to like just duplicate clap one three times to get all those same plugins and then remove all the audio regions. Whereas in Logic, you could just open this up or you can even open up the inspector window and you can start just you can literally go into settings here, you can copy the channel strip settings, you go to a different one, and then you can paste the channel strip settings. So you can do all sorts of really cool things there where it's just so much easier to do all this stuff than it is in GarageBand. Like, like I said, you can't even do it in GarageBand. And then in GarageBand, you see the compressor here, all you can do is control the amount of compression um, on this smart control deal, which doesn't seem very intuitive to me. Okay, so then that brings you to the next portion, which I've already kind of showed you, the inspector window. You have this here, where you can look at an individual track with all of its information. All the plugins are right here. Um, you can use, uh, you know, work with your fader here. You can go into some settings. Um, you can mess around with all sorts of cool things. So it's right within here. You can get your sends, which that's the other thing. GarageBand does not have buses, so you cannot do any sort of sending to a bus to where you can do any sort of like reverb or delay or additional processing, which is extremely frustrating and annoying. Um, it, it does put more strain on your computer to just keep adding like all of these plugins on, especially if you're going to do something that's bigger. So no sends available within GarageBand. Again, this is all you have access to is within this control panel. But again, having this inspector window is really nice. Okay, now let's talk about take folders. When you're doing a take in GarageBand, you pretty much just have to get it right. Because if you record over something, let's just do this. Let's take this like empty track here. I'm just gonna record. Let's just record it. Let's just sell this out and record a piece of audio. Okay, so it's recording audio right now. I don't have anything because I don't have my microphone on. Okay, so you got this audio. Let's record it over it again. 
I'll stop before it even ends. You've now got these two cuts. This is from that first take, this is from the second one. It doesn't create any sort of comp, which is extremely frustrating. So for those of you guys that are using GarageBand, you're like, well, that's just always the way it is. Check out Logic. If I go into Logic here, let's go over here. Let's solo this out. There we go, so we're recording. Okay. So we've got this audio file. Let's record over it. Now notice what that did. It actually saved it and it created a folder. And within this folder, you can actually create a comp, which is extremely useful. Within the comp, you can actually pick and choose which parts of that you wanna use. So like, let's say this is a, a vocal line here that's happening. The first take was really good here, but then the second take was really good here, then the first and the second, whatever. You can go in and do that. It's gonna add crossfades automatically. And then from there, you can take that comp, you can either flatten it, you can export it to a new track, you can create a new track, you can unpack it, you can unpack it to new tracks. Um, you can do all sorts of things. You can just specifically go to take two, whatever. And then you can go into here, which this is gonna be um, the scissor you can start actually making more adjustments that way. Um, so having take folders is extremely, extremely useful. Um, and it's one of the things that as I've already been working in GarageBand here has been so frustrating because it's like, ah, like I wanna just redo that take, but maybe the first part of that take was good. I don't wanna record over it. But then I also like, what if I wanna do like three or four takes of something? You can't keep all of that with GarageBand unless you wanna just create a new track for every single take, which is so, I just, why would you want to do that? I just, it's so much easier to use uh, take folders. Oh, the other thing that you cannot do in GarageBand, this is really strange, I don't know why, but if I want to select multiple tracks at the same time, so I'm holding the command key here and clicking, I can't, it, it doesn't let me select multiple things. So if I want to like take all of these vocals down like 3 dB, I just have to like individually do it, which is ah, so dumb. I don't like it at all. Okay, next thing is pitch against better judgment, I'm gonna show you. This is a scratch vocal, just so you know, and I'm sick if you can't tell. So I'm gonna show you what this sounds like with vocals. This is just first one of this song. Just listen to this here. Don't wanna waste another day. Don't wanna wait another second. Cause when I'm here with you, I wanna be with you. Okay, not bad but not great, I'm not really a singer. So what, when it comes to pitch, if we look in uh, GarageBand, all we can do is an auto-tune. So if I open this up, double click on it, you can do time quantization, okay, track, pitch correction. So I have this set to 74. First of all, if you try to just record with pitch correction on, it's really laggy, it's, there's a lot of latency, it's really dumb to try to record that way. So don't have the pitch correction on when you're recording if you're doing that, that's why you're hearing it. Okay, so what happens if I turn this all the way off? Don't wanna waste another day Don't wanna wait another second Cause when I'm here with you Okay, so obviously I'm pitching. Again, I'm not a singer. Let's turn this up 100%. Don't wanna waste another day Don't wanna wait another second Ugh, it just sounds terrible. I mean, if you wanna go for that really auto tune sound, you can do that. But if we dial this down to like 75%, don't want to waste another day Don't want to wait another second Cause when I'm here with you Okay um, And I did limit it to the key So that's not gonna, so that way we don't have any weird, like, weird stuff happening But even at 74%, I do not like how this sounds at all And the vocal is the most important part of your track. So you need to make sure your vocal is, is sounding like super good. So apart from just getting a perfect take pitch wise, which even when I'm working with amazing singers, usually never happens, this pitch correction here built into GarageBand is not good. It is not good. And there is no flex pitch built into GarageBand. So that's one of the other things with Logic is they have flex pitch built in. So let's just take a look at flex pitch in here. Double click on this. Let's go ahead and turn on pitch. There we go. And this is what it looks like uh, if you've ever used like Melodyne or um, yeah, whatever, then you, you, this is gonna look familiar. You can actually go in here, you can do fine pitch, you can do pitch drift, um, formant shift, vibrato, you can adjust the gain of the individual pieces, you can even move these pieces around to change the rhythms of these pieces, uh... like you could do that. All sorts of things that you can do. And you can get extremely detailed with this. 
and that's how you're going to wind up with a vocal sign like Let me tell you what I think about you Let me tell you how I feel about you Sounds so dang good and it's because, and, and the thing is like Ether, the guy that sang on this, did a really good job. But his performance was pretty pitchy. Now I'm not saying that in a, like a criticism to him because his performance was good. It's just his pitch was not always spot on. But with with good pitch correction, like flex, flex pitch, and you can notice like I'm not correcting everything 100%. I'm just fixing the things that need fixing that are really noticeable. Some of the stuff, yeah, I, I've got it set to perfect. But like this, like I, I don't have a set because he's gliding up to that note. I don't want to take away the realism of that. But in GarageBand, you cannot do this. I mean, you can go in here and go to pitch correction um, and crank that to 100, and you're going to get that same kind of sound that you get in GarageBand. But since you don't have flex pitch in GarageBand, it's, it's really difficult to make a vocal sound super, super good. So that's one of the other things that really frustrates me about GarageBand that Logic does have. The next thing that GarageBand does not have that you do have in, in uh, Logic is the ability to group things. So in GarageBand, if I wanted like my guitars here, if I wanted to make it so that if I edit or if I change the volume of one, it changes the volume of all of them, you cannot do that. Whereas in Logic, you can go in here, and I did this on the bass instruments here. But you can go in here, let's just do this. I've got this dirty bass left, dirty bass right. I can go to group, and I can create a new group. So let's do group four, bass, dirty, I don't know. And then I can go in here, group four, bass, dirty. Now, check this out. If I move one of them, it moves all of them. This is a really handy feature that GarageBand does not have. Okay, the next thing that you cannot do in GarageBand that you can do in Logic is go into here, um, look at over here at the inspector. I can go to this right here, which is on set automatically on read. So this is gonna be how it reads the automation of the track. So it's set to read. But if I do like latch or write, that makes it so that I can actually use my MIDI controller to start messing with the automation. So I could do, um, a lot of times you can do like EQ. So here, let me just show you this. Let's just, I don't know, use this as an example. Let's just put an EQ on here, and then we'll do like a low pass filter and latch it on. Okay, <laughs> that was obviously pretty rough. If I hit A, I can look into my automation. Let's go to this. Let's go to read, so it's no longer on latch. And look at that, it's gonna like have all of that data that I just played in, or played in with the EQ, and now. And then I could go in here, and now I could, you know, start messing with it or do whatever. The other thing that you cannot do in GarageBand that you can do in Logic is create what's called project alternatives. Now, I only found out about this a couple years ago within Logic, but this is so awesome. You can go to File, Project Alternatives, New Alternative, and you could say this as like Rough Draft or something like that. Create that. And so this is really helpful when it comes to mixing or if you're like in the writing process and you have one idea that you wanna do, like I wanna do an acoustic version, I also wanna do a different version, but I'm not really sure what I wanna do. You can create just a whole new alternative, which is awesome, and then you can save that and you can always revert back to other alternatives. So if I save this alternative, it's saving everything as it is right now, and I can always go back to it. So if I make some mixing decisions that I wanna go back to, like I prefer this way other than what I was doing just a second ago, I can always go back to it. You cannot do that in GarageBand. So that is super, super cool. The other thing is you can export stems in Logic. You cannot export stems in GarageBand. So if you actually wanna hire a mixing engineer, have someone do um, all the mixing, you cannot export the individual stems, um, which is really, dumb, I think, but I, it makes sense because, you know, again, GarageBand is not this professional digital audio workstation where they're expecting you to be creating these pro sounding tracks. And obviously there, there are, I'm sure there are some people out there who use GarageBand and are making money from it, but um, I don't know why they wouldn't just use Logic, frankly. Um, so to do that, you can export and then you can um, export all tracks as audio files. And if you do that, you're sending this to like a mixing engineer. Um, you can go in here, have the pattern, so you can like track name custom. And so you can do like track name, so it'd be like, you know, bass, and then you could do BPM, you know, 
144 AM for A minor. Um, so a lot of times mixing engineers want to know what the BPM is and what the key is as well. And so you can uh, do all sorts of really cool custom things. And this will send every single file down and into a folder wherever you want it. And you can send that to a mixing engineer, which is really cool. There's a whole lot more that you can do in Logic than just that. These are some of the highlights, some of the big things that I look at. Frankly, if I were to kind of distill down the main things that I like more about Logic than I do about GarageBand, especially as I am producing this track in GarageBand, which will be the next video, I'm gonna be actually producing the exact same track in GarageBand, and then also producing it in Logic to show you that it, it is, I guess I haven't done it yet, I've only worked on it in GarageBand so far. It's gonna sound so much better in Logic. I can already tell you just based on what I've got in GarageBand, it's gonna sound so much better in Logic. And, and just so you know, like I think it's gonna sound pretty good. Like it's gonna sound passable as a pretty good demo, the version from GarageBand. But if you really want to take things to the next level, getting a program like Logic is gonna make a really, really big difference. Like I said, there are a whole lot of other things that are that are different. It would take a long, 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 long video to go through all of it. These are just kind of the key ones as well as a few other add-ins thrown in. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, send me a comment if you have any questions about Logic, and you should also check out my website, nathanjlarson.com, if you're a home studio producer wanting to really up-level your home studio productions. We'll see you next time. I hate being sick. I hate being sick. Ugh, I can't imagine that's actually good for my voice. <coughs> oh gosh, I feel like I'm gonna die. Mm, I'm gonna go to bed now.